Have you received feedback when it feels like a punch in the gut or somebody's kicked your knees out from underneath you? Well, if you have, you are not alone. And I know I've experienced that a number of times in my life. In this video, I am going to share some skills for you to develop that will transform how you receive feedback so that you can filter it for the benefits and get rid of the stuff that doesn't apply to you. I'm Karen Valencic, founder and author of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. I also am a 33-year veteran of practicing a martial art Aikido, and that's where the black belt tips come from. Before I get started in the body of this, I want to say that most people are pretty uncomfortable giving feedback. A lot of people don't give feedback very well. So if you're getting any kind of verbal feedback, that's a great thing because I would much rather have some verbal feedback than no feedback at all. If you're one of those people that feel uncomfortable giving feedback, I am going to share a link at the end of this video that is called Giving Feedback with Ease and Grace. It makes feedback much easier and inviting. So let's get on with it here. So I'm going to share a couple of really short video clips that illustrate the points that I'm trying to make. So this first clip, I am coming in to punch my partner. And notice what he does. He blocks the punch. And when he blocks the punch, he kind of loses his balance and it leaves an opening for me to punch him in the head. So that's what happens a lot of times when we receive feedback. It's like it throws us off and it leaves us open and we don't have our balance and our footing anymore. This next clip, I'm coming in to give that punch and notice what my partner does differently. He moves in and with me and so he blends with it. And what happens is he keeps his balance, he keeps his integrity and I move with him and we continue in dialogue. And so keep those two things in mind as we go through these three tips. Okay, so the first tip is to develop your center. If you've heard me before, you've heard this before. Center is when we are balanced, focused, and in our strength, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Think of it as being that calm eye in the storm of life. And you can develop that center in a number of different ways, including a breathing practice, really powerful, meditation, of course. You can accomplish it through practiced movement, and you can also do some mind mental exercises around it. The point is, is that it's something that you have to practice on a regular, a hopefully daily practice to be able to really develop that center. Why get centered? Center gives you that flexibility to be able to move with and in as you saw in that video. Center also gives you an awareness and perspective of what's going on and actually improves your intuition and ability to see what's coming at you so you're prepared. Center also allows you to stay calm in chaos and can give you the wherewithal to be able to understand what's going on. So it's a really crucial skill, not just for feedback, for everyday life. Look in the content below this video and I have some free resources where you can explore that more. Skill number two is move in and with. Now in my work, I call that spiral in to make an impact, but you wanna learn when something comes at you, instead of blocking it, you wanna enter in and move it with it. It renders it harmless to yourself and the other person. And so on a practical level, what does that look like? Well, so often when we get feedback, particularly if it's a bit critical, we kind of lash on our interpretation of what they mean. Let me give you a quick example. Recently, a woman told me that I was intense. And I was first, I was like taken back by that because I don't view that word as something positive or something I'm striving for. So I asked her, what does that mean to her? And she says, you know, you are so passionate about what you do and it's stuff that's so worthwhile that there is an intensity to it. Now I can get behind all that, so that helped me not just filter the content, but to actually understand 
what that person was trying to get at more than I had known if I just would have walked away then. When you move in and with, you become the learner. So you ask open-ended questions so you can understand the feedback more. Great if you can do that in the moment, which centering helps you do, but it's okay to enter back in and ask somebody later if they could elaborate on what they meant by that. Skill number three, and this is not necessarily a skill, but it's something very, very important. Get really clear, rock solid clear, on what your purpose and your values-based intention are. Because when you know what your purpose is and you know who you are from a value standpoint, it gives you a filter to filter out those things that come in. So I'm gonna give you a quick example. I was doing a retreat for a team that was part of a larger organization. And there was one man in the group that sat on the back wall with his arms crossed and he, he kind of threw lobs at me through the entire day. What I did with that, because in a way that was a form of feedback, I just modeled the work I was teaching around conflict mastery. But at the end they did a smile sheet and he wrote down, this was the biggest waste of time and energy we could ever think of doing. On its surface, it's kind of hurtful. What the fact is, is I know the importance of what I teach. And so, and I know that I was able to model that. And I know my values based intention is to honor myself and honor others. Now, what's interesting about that story is a couple weeks later, I checked back in with the owner of the company and he said, you know, I have seen a huge change in one person in particular. And I said, well, who is that? And it was that guy. You never know what somebody says may not be actually what they're experiencing. So being rock solid allows you to filter out those things. And if I find I've got somebody giving me feedback where there doesn't seem to be honor involved, that's a filter for me. And I know I'm very called to the work I do. People can give me input and I change and evolve what I teach based upon that feedback and that is good. But I also filter things out that don't really fit for me. So keep that in mind. Getting good feedback is really a challenge at times. And so if you want to get good feedback, sometimes you have to be clear and deliberate about asking for it. And when you ask for feedback, be sure to include these two things. The first is, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? Are you trying to be a great public speaker? Are you trying to be a good team leader? What is it that your intention, your larger intention is? And tell the person up front, you know, I really want to improve my communication in these meetings, whatever it is. So there's a basis for the feedback. And then you want to be really specific. Can you give me some real specific feedback on how I came across? Did I answer the questions well? What would I do to improve? And I'd really value this. So you've set that up for the person to feel more comfortable giving you that feedback. So that is it. Thank you so much for tuning in and please like and subscribe so this can reach more people. And I so appreciate you hanging in here with me. So thank you so very much. Until next time, bye-bye.